action. I was walking through ATB with my woman, right? And she's white. And every person in the store that was a black woman looked at us with some with some interesting eyes. Now we have a baby. And now they would look at the baby with big, beautiful eyes, like, oh my gosh, the baby's so beautiful. But they would glance at her like, hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting and uncomfortable feeling because nobody wants to address race when it's not being focused on what we consider a minority. When black people are snarky towards other groups of people, what do you call that? It's not racism, but it's definitely prejudice. It's definitely prejudice. And yeah. so if a person who's of a specific race and if they feel like, because man, feelings are so attached to this thing. When we start having these conversations about like how a person perceives me, feelings is a big part of it. It's a huge part of it. And my biggest question is why do black women have such a problem when they see a, a black man dating someone that's not a black woman? You know what? I want to say this. Let's let's get deeper than that. I think black women need to know from a black man's perspective why you chose to date outside of your race. Because we all have reasons to why. And, and, and you may not have a specific reason, but like what made you say, hey, I, I, I'm going I'm to date somebody else? I deal with women who like me. If a woman shows interest in me, like I think once a woman chooses a man, it's a big deal. If you try to pursue a woman, you'll always be pursuing that woman. If you try to persuade her, convince her to like you, then you're going to be trying to convince her to like you forever because she's she's not just not that interested. You can flatter her with gifts or whatever you choose, but she's just not that interested. But when a woman likes me, you can tell because a woman, she doesn't give people like men specifically. Time is her greatest resource, right? A beautiful woman, time is her greatest asset. And she don't give her time to men that she don't like. So what you're saying is, do you feel that, I'll, I'll ask this, do you yes. think that black women pursue what they want compared to other races of women? I was at the rodeo, yes. And this it was a nice girl. She was a very cute girl, uh, a younger woman. She's probably like 23 years old, okay? Right. And I could tell that she really did like me. She liked me a great deal. But the way that she showed that she liked me, she kept asking me to spend $20 on a turkey leg. <laughs> and I was like, yo, man, hey, I got so many bills in my life, and I, I think you're a cool person, but the, I, that's not how I show affection. <laughs> I don't. That's not my love language. May, Spending money is not my love language. May I ask the race of the young woman? Oh, oh, she was black. <laughs> <laughs> she was black. Yeah, absolutely, positively. She was black. And she was fun. She laughed at my jokes. You know what I'm saying? I could tell that she had a genuine interest with her time, uh, that she, she wanted to talk to me, right? And I was like, man, this is... I looked at the product. I was like, this is great product. <laughs> right, right. But then I looked at the level of the conversation. Whatever, I'll be wasting the young lady's time. What, she, what am I going to do with that young person? Right, I'll be wasting right. her time. She's not where I'm at. I'm not where she's at. It'd be a nice three weeks. And you know what I'm saying? She, she, she dealt with an old nigga and I dealt with a young girl. Huh? How about that? So with your white partner, yes. how do you feel like that relationship came together? Like, what was the ease of it? Was it? And I don't want to. I don't want to lead the question by saying ease of it because I don't know if it was easy. But I'll just say, what what was that transition like? What was that journey like? Man, I was doing a. I was working a, a job that I really didn't like doing very much, and she was working there in a different position. And so she would come to the back and engage with me, and she had this big smile. She has. A way that she speaks is different than just the common vernacular in Houston. I was like, man, girl, where are you from? And then when she told me where she was from, it was a commonality. And it was just like, boom, just hit immediately. And mm -hmm. so when I, the way that she and interacted with me, I knew that she was interested in the level of her conversation and the engagement of her eyes, the, the brightness of her smile. I was like, this is a lady and I would like to get to know her. You know, you talked about black women having an issue when they see brothers in interracial relationships. But I have to be honest, if the Internet is any reflection of how BWs, I need to start saying it like angry, man, uh, BWs interact uh, with opposite sex versus the other groups of women. I mean, what you just said, the twenty dollars for the turkey leg in comparison to the conversation you had with the, you know, your white partner, that seems to be the case. All you know what she I, was doing? What, what she was doing? We was both working at the rodeo. We was working 12-hour days. And so she was bringing a lunch. Like, I was bringing a lunch. And so we could eat lunch together because we both brought our lunch. Like, the commonalities. Like, 
to be 20 years old, you're not thinking about packing no lunch. You're just going to, if you got $100, you're going to spend $25 on some food. Right. you probably get some cheese fries. Right. And I'm not in a place in my life to be, friv to be frivolous. Right. And I think any other person, I think men are so predatory sometimes. Right. Because they're so, they're so sex deprived that as soon as they get the opportunity, they just go jump on it. And they, they add to the chaos in their society by causing harm to these wonderful young women who want to have positive experiences. And so respect that woman's time, respect that woman's body, man. Like, be be happy that a young woman was even interested in you. That's a notch in your belt, man. Like, just know that you're on the path to finding the woman you're supposed to be with because you're doing the things that need to be done. That's right? actually great advice, too. And that does happen with a lot of men, too. We've talked about this. We lead with lust. You know, you just, you let your impulse take over and you make a bad decision. But back backing up. You know, I don't think our women are actually taught how to pursue men. She had on frumpy clothes. I don't think our men, <laughs> I don't think our women uh, know how to engage with men. So it, when it, when, it, when we talk about interracial relationship, why men, I think sometimes they outside of their race is, it's not just the ease, but it's the feeling that a man gets from a woman being a woman, acting like a woman and not pursuing I've, his pocket. I've never had an easy time pursuing women. Pursuing women is very difficult right. because you're setting yourself up for failure already. You're going after a person who doesn't even know you. She knows she knows nothing about you. You know nothing about her. And so it's a cold call. You're just picking up the phone, dialing the number. I'm like, hey, would you like to go on a date? Hey, can I take you out? Hey, nigga, no. <laughs> Can't take me nowhere. I don't know you. I need to get to know you. I need some type of level of familiarity. Right. And so the approach is what's mad what matters. You have to make yourself accessible. And so most people, if just do something that's fun, that's a co-ed event, and now you're accessible. And so people can see you. They get to see you interact with other men. Women want to see that you're social proof, that you're not a creep. That's true. Like, this is, this is how relationships exist. They don't exist in a vacuum. It's not when, when you try to meet someone on the Internet, you, you're, you're really creating chaos for yourself because... It's it's an uh it's an unnatural environment. It's not how human beings behave. Even if you go to a bar, that's really not how human beings behave. You know, getting drunk and inebriated, right? And so we can have conversations. We actually meet through social functions, and that's how you actually get to know a person. But this hookup culture has destroyed the relationship. And as we're talking about relationships and people, very specifically. If you're actually trying, like, just a good person, you're not thinking about whether she's white, whether she's Mexican, whether she's black. You're like, man, that, that woman made me laugh. So many women don't have a great sense of humor. So when a woman can tell a joke with a punchline, it actually lands. Like, damn, girl, <laughs> that was perfect timing. What do you think the standards are for white women and Hispanic women? Like, do you, think, do you think they have the same standards on men as uh, our women do, black women? It's very cultural, right? And like, dude, does a white man have to make a hundred thousand dollars to get some some cootie cat? I don't even. All, all I think this is internet speak, yeah. and I think once you start dealing with women in reality, if she works at HEB, if she works at Kroger, like the conversation is just different. She's like, "What are you talking about? A hundred thousand dollars, man? I go to ACC, I drive a Honda Civic, and I live in my mom's house. What are you talking about? Right? Like, she she wants to go outside for a little while because she's tired of being in her room." Like, <laughs> right, right, right. And the, when I say her, this woman can be up to the age of 33 living with her parents because the economy is that difficult. And so, like, I want to talk about interracial dating, but I think you're supposed to date the person that matches your ideology, your belief system, right? And if so, for me, right, economics matters a whole lot for me. And natural beauty also matters a whole lot for me. So for my pocketbooks to protect my wallet and to protect my heart, I don't pay for fingernails. I don't pay for weaves. I don't pay for eyelashes. I don't pay for makeup. I don't do it. It's not my thing. If you tell me that you need to go to the salon and get your hair cut or something because you have split ends, I understand the maintenance and the upkeep of having hair. But outside of that, that's an expense that I can't afford. I'm sorry. You're not in my price range. You know, I got a heavy heart, man. You know why my heart is heavy as we talk about this? Tell me why your heart is so heavy, my sir. My heart is heavy, man. And I want, hey, I want y'all, I want, I want to share this with y'all, just be very vulnerable right now. The nature of what we're talking about is righteous and morally upstanding. But when you talk, when you look at the internet, 
which is influencing us heavy and programming us. The talk of relationship has come all the way down to can you afford it? Can you afford the relationship? And this is what makes it dangerous when we start mixing in politics and you get the Democratic Party and Kamala Harris in and what a lot of their agenda is because it does not promote family. It doesn't promote family at all. It doesn't promote the very thing that could turn around your economic situation. It doesn't. It, it makes the individual believe that they can do everything on their own. And now what we're talking about as individuals is, can I afford this relationship? Or if you're not making what I make, then I can't be in this relationship. And on a hierarchy of needs, interaction with someone, you know, with somebody is on that list. It is on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so it's just astounding how the conversation, because again, yeah, we started off with one thing, but as we get deep, like dive deeper, we think about where are my pockets? How much money do I have? Can I afford to date this person? You have speeches online right now of women saying that, you know, if a man makes $50,000 annually, he shouldn't be dating, which to be totally honest is above the average individual income. I know they say that the average salary is $63,000, but it would just, you know. You said something I think it was very powerful. Go ahead. Around. You said the internet was programming us. Yeah. Why would we possibly allow the internet to program us? Like, I'm a content creator. You watching this video was very powerful for me. It, it, it stimulates the algorithm. It promotes more content. I get it. But I'm not going to perpetuate to my own demise. Like, I want you to stop scrolling. I want you to put your phone down and go interact with people in real life. Go to the grocery store, actually pick up pick up your food instead of ordering it online. The only way that you get to know people is to be around people. And when you're having a conversation around people, no one's talking about how much money they make. That's impolite. It just, it just is. And so all this stuff, it's it's perverse, right? We're out of line. Everything is out of order. <laughs> I'm like, you're the damn I know $50,000. Who cares about $50,000? I want to meet someone who meets my interests. I want to fall in love and make a baby. That's what people want. Yes, that that's is. What, that's what women want. They want the fairy tale. And if you can make $32,000 a year being an order selector at some warehouse, man, read a few books. Write, write down a few words and go sweep this woman off her feet because so many men lack the balls to go talk to her. And she'd be so happy to said hi. You know, you think about personal interaction, too. It's like you, you talked about Internet. So, you know, Internet dating, has that's not new, right? But I come from a time where, you know, you had to personally really interact with someone to get any type of engagement. I think by taking that out of the equation, making everything. Have you dated off the Internet? Uh, I can say, yeah. You know how many times I dated off the internet, and then when I see her, like, she showed a picture from three years ago. She showed a picture with 13 filters on it, and I'm like, this isn't even you. Yeah, but I have, to, I have to entertain her, though, you know what I'm saying? It's like, why are we playing these shenanigans? If I would have saw her in real life, I wouldn't have talked to her in real life. And so I left that stuff alone, man. Cheese spa, uh, plenty of fish, all Cheese that spa. junk. <laughs> yeah, bye. What's cheese spa? It's the place where you get to find Latinas. Oh. <laughs> hey, and I put a Dominican flag on my joint, put a Mexican oh, flag on my joint. What's man. up? Hola, como ta? Did you did you find any any beautiful women? That man, I, they weren't beautiful, but there's women. They like black men. What's up? The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.